It's time for another a ob- fuck. These headphones are evil. It's time for another obligatory review of a Final Fantasy game. You know, it's warmer weather, and unlike most people, I don't go outside in warmer weather. I stay inside. I go outside for cold weather, because I can handle that. I don't know, my Dominican jeans go crazy when it's too hot. Isn't that weird? After all, like, that is a Caribbean gene. DR is a hot place. I should be able to handle that. But somehow it does the opposite. It makes me go crazy. So I stay inside where it's nice and cool, and I play video games. And I love JRPGs, so it was the 4th of July. I think it was 8 a.m. and I wanted to get myself a video game from PlayStation Network. My intentions were either to spend five dollars and thirty cents on Zeno Gears or Chrono Cross, or I was going to spend a less than two dollars or even less than one dollar on. I think it was Vagrant Vagrant Story. That's what it was. Vagrant Story. Rest assured, something possessed me to get Final Fantasy VIII. Now, the last Final Fantasy game... The last time I played that game was in the summer of 2004, when I was a nine-year-old kid. I was really anxious. How am I going to beat this game? I kept asking my older cousin, he usually helps me out in video games, but he said he didn't like Final Fantasy VIII. I asked my dad, he's like, no, I'm staying in my room, I don't like that game. So I was on my own for Final Fantasy VIII, and the disc was really scratched up, so I couldn't go very far in the game. Whenever it got to a CG cutscene, because my dad likes scratching his discs for some reason, my cousin is very well aware of that shit. I used to have that problem all the time. I could never get... I could never beat any of these Final Fantasy games because whenever we would get to a CG scene, I would have to restart it and hope to whatever deity that it would make it through the CG cutscene without freezing. Because it was just that damaged. These discs were really damaged. But, I decided I'm going to play the game again. I told my bro that this game is horrible, but it's a Final Fantasy game, and... I still don't want to get started on 9. I don't know why, just... I'm on a side quest state of mind for Final Fantasy 9, and... The only thing I want to do in that game is get to Ozma, beat Ozma, and then I can beat the game. But like I said, as I've said before, Final Fantasy IX, I think if I it would have been my childhood game, then I would have liked it better than Seven. But all that BS aside, I started playing the game in July the 4th, and I beat it... July the 13th, which is today, at a Sunday. It took me about two hours a day, because all I really wanted to do today was get started on the super boss, Omega Weapon. I fought him yesterday, or maybe not even yes, yeah, it was yesterday. It was like 11 p.m., kept attempting to beat him wasn't getting close but then I junctioned 255 strength to Zell I started using that Armageddon fist technique the way the fans dub it it's not an actual move and I didn't expect it but Omega Weapon got killed by two or three Armageddon fists a bunch of Renzo Kuken and 
I was lucky enough to get one single line heart in there. Which will take like somewhere between 20 and 25% of his health away. So that was good. And now that I think about it, no wonder he died. No wonder. I, I wasn't thinking about it, but that strategy, as broken as it was, it pretty much made him go down like a bitch, and that's just one more super boss I have under my palette. But going into the actual game, I beat it in like an hour later. I did get emotional near the end, which surprises me, because I rarely get emotional. I, I didn't cry or anything, but just like... You could tell I was a bit moved. Now, going into the storyline... Back in high school, I used to always say that Final Fantasy was the worst love story. And I was completely behind Spoonie's review of Final Fantasy VIII. And while I didn't like the love story, I didn't like the character development. I usually don't like character development in a square soft RPG. I think characters start off really cool. I'll be very flawed. And then over time they get more cheesy, more corny, and they lose all their realism. And just go back to being characters. And that's what the love story did to Squall, and maybe Renoa to a lesser extent, but not by much. It didn't change her much. Why does it look like I got like a fat ass neck all of a sudden? Let me see that shit. I have no idea. Maybe I'm just stretching it. I have no clue. My face is weird. Fuck it. Fuck it. Let, let's just go back to review. The storyline did start off pretty cool in my opinion. I hate school settings. But I really did like the realism to some extent. Some of the earlier pieces in the soundtrack were really nice. I liked how modern and futuristic it sounded with some of the more... I'd say jazzier or funkier tracks. A lot of deep bass going on. And in JRPG logic, to make something sound more modern or futuristic, you put jazz elements in the soundtrack. You put a lot of bass. There, were, there was a lot of variety in the soundtrack where towards the end, things sort of got more gothic. Especially whenever a sorceress was involved. And that did kill the realism, but... I'm not a realism absolutist. I think I made that term up, but... Whatever, you understand what it means. I don't think that realism is... Absolutely a good thing, and that it has to be applied absolutely, but... I like it, I like the vibe. First disc was pretty good. I blazed through it because it was pretty quick. Second disc, I didn't like how we were stuck on Galbadia. But I liked a lot of the stuff that happened in the second disc. Third disc, didn't really like it very much. In terms of storyline because that's where the love story shit started coming through. And I blazed through the fourth disc. The fourth disc I started yesterday. All you have to do is beat Adele, go through eight of boss battles to get all your abilities back, and then face off Ultimecia. The only variety that comes from the, eighth, from the fourth disc is if you want to fight Omega Weapon, which I did. Now as for the soundtrack, you can already tell I love the soundtrack to this game. It's a bit repetitive, but it really suits... The game, how futuristic it is at times, how gothic it can be. It's. It fits Final Fantasy VIII, just like the soundtrack to Final Fantasy VII fit Final Fantasy VII. 
all the gothic elements to Final Fantasy VII soundtrack applied to Sephiroth a lot, but it wasn't this weird, uh, the same kind of gothic nature for Ultimisi or the Sorceresses, where there was a Victorian vibe to it. Here, I mean, with Sephiroth, it's kind of like, let's say, Alfred Hitchcock vibe, that kind of psycho vibe where Sephiroth, whenever he's around, there's always some gothic soundtrack playing, and it makes Sephiroth sound not like some kind of witch or gothic supernatural creature, but rather a, a psycho mass murdering serial killer. Psychopath, psychotic, whatever. He wasn't completely there. And I like that. Kind of like how I like how Kefka's soundtrack made him come off as the ultimate nihilist. And then towards the end, he was somewhat of a god of death, ironically. With that, what was it? Laughing mad, running mad, dancing mad. Whatever his theme was, I think it was laughing mad. But, yeah, the soundtrack was really good. I liked, I always liked the visual style of Final Fantasy VIII. But the gameplay is what got it the most problems. A lot of people didn't really like the junctioning system. Which I think is funny, since a lot of these people also like Final Fantasy VI. And Hiroyuki Ito designed both the systems, and they're very similar. The Esper system, and... The Guardian Force system, where you junction the Guardian Forces to your characters, you assign them to your characters, basically. And then, as you level up, the Guardian Forces, which are basically like the Espers, or Eidolons, or monsters you can summon, you get more abilities, and some of those abilities allow you to junction magic to your stats to make them stronger. Or to turn items into spells that you can junction to your stats. No. And it was like Final Fantasy VI's system ad absurdum. Because it was a bit more ridiculous. I mean, with Final Fantasy VI, you can only junction one Esper to your character. And aside from. The spells you can level up and teach your char your characters uh, that you can essentially give to your characters. Other than that, the only like variety they added was that whenever you leveled up with one of your characters, if you give them that one Esper, it levels up a specific stat, or even multiple stats, I don't remember. But that's as deep as it got. With Final Fantasy VIII, however, basically, the GFs, they're really necessary unless you want to go to a sp special challenge. You can junction, like, like, you can get them, like, a lot of good-ass magic, and their stats are going to make them practically invincible. And towards the end, my characters all had 999 health, and none of them were level 100. Actually, none of them were even in the 80s in terms of their levels. They were all below 79. So they were powerful, but they weren't fully leveled. Not even close. And... They had max strength stats. Max health stats. I gave Squall a lot of speed. I gave everyone else a lot of magic power, but since I really don't use offensive spells like that, I didn't give him much. And that was it. 
I basically went for the brute force attempt. And they all have these interesting limit breaks because they're like the desperation attacks in Final Fantasy VI. Only, in Final Fantasy VI, you could play through the whole game without using a desperation attack once. I've seen people in the comments section saying they beat the game three times over in Final Fantasy VI without using the desperation attack. But in eight, basically, they're there. And you don't have to be low health necessarily. You can cast Aura and they'll do their desperation attacks. Hold on. I can tell when family calls me because the phone rings. And unlike telemarketers where if it doesn't ring for a while they stop calling you. These fucking idiots will let that shit ring. They don't take no for an answer. They want you to pick up the damn phone. And it's gotten pretty ridiculous where... Where I basically like kept searching for a phone because my younger brother puts the phone in stupid places. And it's a three minute search. And there's they're waiting three minutes for me to actually answer the phone. And then when I pick it up, they're like, why did it take you so long to call me? And then I tell them, you fucking inbred retards, you low IQ <laughs> mongoloids. Why did you wait there for three minutes and then have an attitude with me? I was probably searching for the phone. No, I wasn't trolling you. Obviously, I was having difficulty finding the phone because I don't... Because what else would I be doing if I wasn't going to answer? I wouldn't answer. And sometimes I, I'm doing something like, you know, I'm in the shitter and then they do this BS... It's why I don't feel, it's why I get over it when some of them die, pretty much. I get over it quickly. Although, uh, that's kind of fucked up because I just made a reference to my great-grandma and uh, she doesn't do that as much as the other two, the other five. Hmm, one, two, three... Four. There's four left. That I have to deal with. Man, but besides that... The limit breaks are really good in this game because... Unlike maybe... Final Fantasy VI and below... 7, 8, and 10... Had it so that... Limit breaks... Ensure that... You could do more than 999, wait, 9,999 damage because you had multiple hits. 
and so they would all stack and you'd end up with these really deadly moves which is good because that means that a lot of the super bosses are going to be really deadly too they're going to challenge you more to compensate for the cheap battling system but on the downside it also means that final bosses are easier because you could just hit them with the strongest shit but that's fun too because final bosses are fun to own and they're fun to struggle with I like being able to do both unlike with Kefko where you saw that I barely won against him if I prepared properly I would have done a better job but you already know that was fun too because I was on my last leg and I was being cheap as hell anyway I was one turn away from losing but regardless I liked the junctioning system I think a lot of people just have they don't appreciate it a lot of people say it racks up their brain it takes out chunks of it it's very stressful for them it's not that hard I rarely have seen a GRPG combat system that has fucked my brain over they're usually very simple while Final Fantasy VIII might have overdone it a bit in actuality it was a pretty solid system It was solid because it got you involved, it got you invested in each of the characters. And you could play it however you want. It made fights a lot more entertaining. And it's basically the opposite of Final Fantasy 13. Where 13 is everything you shouldn't do with a combat system. It was restrictive. It was basically it was dull as shit because you were basically watching this crystarium thing move around and while the colors were pretty it was unnecessary. You could have just had them um, gain abilities and gain stats every battle. It should have just told you hey you want to gain stats here or there like Super Mario RPG or Kingdom Hearts Chain of Memories that's what they should have gone for if they were going to have it that linear but no they basically made it tedious Final Fantasy VIII was never tedious for me it was fun it was fast I got to basically make my own preferable party with Squall, Zell, and Quistis. Some people prefer Irvin. Some prefer having Selfie or Renoa. I had my bomb squad. And we were kicking ass. And I went for the brute force approach. As opposed to a more balanced approach. More well-rounded approach. Or a more strategical approach. Nah. I always go for brute force. That's just me. That's how I like playing the game. It's easier, it's more quick, and it's fun because I like using Renzo Kukins a lot. I often use the kamikaze strategy where I have everyone else in good stats and I put Squall near death so that he can do Renzo Kukins and line hearts like it's nobody's business. And I like how you can use strategy like that in Final Fantasy VIII. You can experiment. With 13, you couldn't experiment a lot. It was very boring. And that's why I didn't do any of the side quests. 13 is the only Final Fantasy game where I didn't bother with any of the side quests except for repairing Bhakti. Big deal. I didn't go for any of the super bosses. I just played through the game. I beat it. I saved at the post game and then that's it and it was a downer it wasn't very fun but it was fun of fantasy I'm a fanboy and I did it with a smile anyway 
And that's not what happened with Final Fantasy VIII. I was actually invested in the characters. I was moved near the end. And I was pleasantly surprised with how I liked the game. Is it the best Final Fantasy? No. But should it be the Black Sheep? Hell no. The fact that it's the Black Sheep is probably because the love story sucks. And... They didn't like the direction of the junctioning system and GF system. And, let's be honest, maybe a lot of people don't like Squall and his emo ass. I know my younger brother hated Squall because that nigga was too emo. And he reminded him of me because I'm a white douche. But that's about it. Other than that, the system was on point. The game was on point. I recommend that you guys actually play the game if if you you want to give something a chance you've played all the recommended classics for JRPGs like you've played 6, you've played 7 you've played all that stuff people will consider the best game ever BS I mean, basically, it's come to a point where people are no longer judgmental on 7. And where people can finally say that maybe 6 was a little overrated. But both those games are classics that you should like. If you're going to have an opinion on the internet. And I like both of them. But honestly, it shouldn't be the black sheep. That's all I gotta say. Mr. Rock 7, I think someone's here, suck my dick.